वेलकम बैक एवरी वन लेट एस स्टार्ट विद लेक्चर थ्री सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग सिमेट्री एलिमेंट्स एंड सिमेट्री ऑपरेशन एंड इन दैट लेट एस कंटिन्यू अवर डिस्कशन ऑन प्रॉपर एक्सेस एंड प्रॉपर रोटेशन वी हैव सीन एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वॉटर मॉलिक्यूल एंड कॉर्डिनेट सिस्टम हाउ सी टू एक्सेस और सी टू रोटेशन affects water and cartesian system right so let us continue with that and let's uh, take few more examples so that this is very clear so let's take an example of uh, a molecule called bf3 yes the configuration is uh, trigonal planar molecule so trigonal planar let us try to list down what all symmetry axes are present in this so let us first try to identify the first symmetry element or uh, the proper axis so this will be perpendicular to the plane of the board passing through b so this is called as c3 proper axis right and then we will see what all operations it will give another uh, axis will be the one which is actually in the plane of the board and is passing through b and f atoms so this will be called as c2 axis c2 axis and how many such c2 axis will be present there will be three such c2 axis present so we have three such bf atoms so we'll have this c2 and another one passing through this right so three such c2 axis now let us see what is the effect of c3 and c2 operations on to this molecule so let's say if we draw this again quickly b f f f so we have 1 2 3 now we can do c3 operation m times right c n operation m times so n is equal to 3 over here and m is equal to 1 so if we do that we will do a 120 degree anti clockwise rotation because this is 2 pi by n right so what do we get over here b f f f now this one comes here two goes there Three goes there, right? So we have so one, two, and three. Now let's say similarly, if we do C three operation twice, what do we get? So instead of one twenty degree rotation, we have to do now a two forty degree rotation because one twenty is C three one, so C three two will be. Two uh, forty degree rotation. So what do we get? B F F F. So again, this is rotation will be anti clockwise. But now one actually moves all the way here. Three moves all the way here, and two moves all the way there. Right. So we have two forty degree rotation. So one comes over here. Three over here. Two over here, right? This is C three done twice. Now you can see that if you do C three one over here, this is also related by C three one. So if you do C three one, C three one, C three one, it actually gives rise to C three two, right? So you can see that result by yourself. So C three one, C three one gives rise to C three two. Okay. so that's uh, all c3 if you do c3 thrice what do you get so let's say you also do c3 three times so three times means 360 degree rotation so 360 degree rota rotation is zero rotation right so you get your molecule in identical configuration instead of equivalent so these two are equivalent configurations so this is equivalent this is equivalent now what you are going to get here is if you do c3 three rotation and 
equivalent identical configuration. So this, let me write down, is called as identical configuration because the atoms are actually not moving from their place. Okay, and for this reason, this is also called as identity operation because you have not actually done any movement. So C33 is actually equivalent to identity operation, right? So let's look at further. Let's try to do a C2 operation now on this molecule. So our first C2 will be in the plane of the board passing through these atoms. So if we have one, two, three. Now remember anything which is lying on the symmetry element does not move, right? So C2 which is passing through BF1, okay? This is just to identify which C2 we are using. Now if B and F1 are not moving, the only atoms that will move are F2 and F3. So this will be 3, this will be 2 because now 2 has actually moved this side and 3 has moved this side, right? So F3 is replaced by F2, okay? Now similarly, we can keep on doing other operations. So if we continue with C2, BF1 again, we will see that we will get. So I'm not moving a BF1. So what should we write here? So this will be 2 now and this will be 3 over here, right? Because again, F3 will go to F2, F2 will go to F3. Now, if you see this, uh, if you want to go from directly from here to here, so C2 done twice will be actually identity operation, right? So identity or you can say C2 done twice. So C2 done twice will give you a identity operation, okay? So now uh, let's also see what is order of the axis. N, so it's defined by N. So it's the largest rotation. So we can say largest value of N such that rotation by 2 pi by n gives rise to equivalent configuration, right? So this is called as order of the axis. So for example, this is proper axis with an order 2. The previous one which we saw was proper axis with order 3. Now if a molecule has more than, if a molecule has more than one proper axis, of rotations, axis with highest order is called as principal axis. Principal axis of rotation. So in case of BF3, C3 is principal axis. Right? So let's see more examples. So let's go to square planar XEF4.
so what all axes it will have so it will have uh, uh, let's say one axis which is perpendicular to the plane of the board so this is perpendicular to the plane uh, also this is a square planar so which is uh, perpendicular to the plane of the board this will be a c4 axis right collinear to c4 there would also be a c2 axis okay so try to uh, we will try to work it out now in addition to that if you see there would be one c2 axis which is actually passing through f x e f bond right so this will be c2 prime and there will be two such axis because there are two such stretches so there will be one more like this so we can write down over here two c2 prime right then uh, there would be another c2 which is actually bisecting the xe f xe angle right instead of passing through the bonds now it is bisecting this angle so XEF, this is also a C2. So this will be called as C2 double prime. This is just to identify or distinguish between different C2s. And there will be two such C2 primes, right? So these are all the uh, proper rotation axes which are present in this molecule. And C4 will be called as principal axis, right? Because this is the axis with highest order okay now how many rotations each axis will give rise to so let's try to work it out that as well so c4 can give rise to c4 1 c4 done twice c4 done thrice c4 done four times right so if you do c4 done five times this will be equivalent to c4 done once okay if you go to C4 done six times, this will be equivalent to C4 done twice. So it keeps on getting uh, repeated. Okay, so now let's actually try to work out all these operations and see for yourself. So X, E, F, 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 1, 2, three four okay let's quickly do c41 okay what do we get x e f f f f so this is a rotation by 90 degrees c41 2 pi by 4 right so this is 2 pi by 4 rotation which is 90 degree so 90 degree anti-clockwise, one will come over here, two, three, four, right? Now let's do C4, two. So C4 twice will be 90 degree plus 90 degree, right? So that will be 180 degree rotation. So 180 means that now one will go to its diagonally opposite position, one, two will go there, two, three four so again let's do c4 three operation so now three operation means the angle will be 19 to 3 so that is tell me this is 270 so now one moves all the way to this position two moves all the way to this position three and four and now similarly if we do c4 four the rotation is four times so 90 degree into four that is 360 degree that means no rotation so you get the original molecule back over here right so these are called as equivalent configurations this one would be identical configurations so that's why so C41, four operations it will give rise to C43, 
and C44, which will be equivalent to identity, right? Now, if you keep on going further, C45, again, you will go back to C41. So C45 will be 90 degree into 5, that is 360 plus 90. So 360 is cancelled out. So this will be equal to C41 operation, right? So that is very straightforward to see. So therefore, we can now say that rotation by 2 pi by n carried out successively by m times gives c n m and if n is equal to m we get c n n which is equivalent to identity and in this way if we keep on going if we have n plus 1 this is equal to c n if it is n plus 2 it is equivalent to c n 2 and so on okay so thus we can say a proper axis of order n generates n operations so we will see later that uh, why number of operations are important so uh, it's in the definition of mathematical groups that we are going to learn later so we need to understand that what are the proper axis of rotations present in a molecule and how many operations it will generate okay so this is a symmetry element and this is a symmetry operations so we need to know both uh, we need to first list down all the symmetry elements or all the proper axis of rotation for now and what are the symmetry operations or how many operations it will generate so let's take one more example to list down the symmetry or the proper axis of rotation it's a simple benzene molecule H H so I'm giving you an answer try to verify uh, the list of proper axis of rotation so there will be one C6 and also try to work out what all operations it will generate then you will have C3 you will have C2 these three are collinear to each other then you will have C2 prime three such C2s and three C2 double primes okay so try to identify where these are and let's also find out if there is any c4 present if there is any c5 present in this okay and then what are the corresponding uh, operations it will generate so for example now this should generate six operations this one should generate three operations two operations each right so take it as a home exercise and complete this try to locate these axes onto the molecule and try to generate all the operations corresponding operations okay so another important point is if you want to draw the molecule onto the cartesian system so a note on axis definition in Cartesian coordinate system so you can say that uh, while imposing 
so sometimes it is required in this course while imposing a set of cartesian axis on a molecule z axis lies along the principal axis axis of rotation so you can say that if you don't know where the principal axis is you basically you will put the molecule incorrectly in the cartesian coordinate system because if you are not putting z axis along the principal axis you might not get correct results further uh, problems right then x axis lies on to the molecular plane of course it has to be perpendicular to z axis or the principal axis so we can also say or in the plane containing highest number of atoms in the molecule if molecule is non planar so let's say if we want to uh, put our bf3 into cartesian system how do we do that so this is the right handed coordinate system x y and z so of course if you have defined z and x axis uh, positions the y axis is determined automatically by right handed uh, coordinate system right so if we are keeping our molecule or the b so we have to uh, put it such that the c3 axis which is the principal axis lies along the z axis right so we will put b f f f so this uh, bf3 molecular plane is now in xy plane x axis is along one of the bf bonds right and z axis is along the c3 axis okay so this z axis becomes our c3 axis x axis is now one of the c2 axis and then these two f's or these two fluorine atoms would lie on to the xy plane so that's how you try to uh, orient the molecule on to the cartesian coordinate system okay let's take one more example before we stop so let's try to work out c2h4 where all the axes will be present in this so c2h4 will be if you draw out the structure it will be like this it's a planar molecule again right okay so let's try to draw uh, what all uh, proper axis of rotations will be present in this so one of them is very clear it's passing through the cc bond c2 another is bisecting the cc double bond and the third one is actually perpendicular to the plane of the board and through this bond right so it will be like i'm drawing it like this 
which is actually perpendicular to the surface. So this is third C2 axis. So there will be three C2s. All three will be perpendicular to each other. Now your uh, exercise is try to identify principal axis and put this molecule on Cartesian system. Okay, so try to do this at home. Also, let me give you a few examples to work at home. So let's try to do CH4, then uh, C2H4 you are going to do, then I have also given you C6, H6, benzene. Let's also try to do C6H12, both uh, the forms, boat and chair, so cyclohexane, both the forms, and try to see what all list down. proper axis of rotations and then find the principal axis and put the molecule on the Cartesian system. See if you can do it. So I think that is all for today. So let's continue our discussion uh, on symmetry elements and operations and we'll start with uh, symmetry planes. That's all for today.